Something interesting happened a few days ago. So I actually have some activity, McCulture or whatever news. Um, I went on the job and uh, it was a place I had, you know, when you go on the job, you obviously don't stay at home. And we went to a place that I knew I had been to multiple times. I recognized the path, the road. It was west of where I am at now in Louisiana. So um, being as I'm really close to the border of Texas, we traveled a long way to get there. It was somewhere in Texas or even further over. But uh, I don't remember what we did out that way. I just remember when we were coming back with our group. And I remember that we stopped at like some sort of rest area or something. And there was like this cafe area. And I was sitting in a cafe booth with my handler. And uh, I can remember sitting in that in that in that booth seat across the table from him studying his face because I, I do that you know I'll study your face your arms your legs I'm an artist I'm studying things you know and uh, I'm, I'm looking at him because in this case I knew I was on the job and I wanted to remember his face and uh, he he's looking at me all nice and casual there's no drinks we're not drinking anything and he said you have to retire tomorrow and I was like, oh, hell no, I'm not. Ha <laughs> ha. You crazy. And he's like, no, you have to retire tomorrow. The orders have already come through. You're retiring tomorrow. And I was like, no, not happening, not retiring. And uh, we sat there and argued about the matter. And he's very calm about the matter. You're going to retire. There's nothing you can do about it. I was like, oh, no, 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 it's not going to happen. He's like, but if you retire and go through it, then you're going to get everything you wanted. You're going to get fame. You're going to get big fat royalty checks, your stuff is going to be popular, and I was like, no, no, I'm not retiring, okay, I can have that and still do this, because, uh, you know, the whole, you know, one of the reasons why we sleep when we're on the job is so that we can live daily lives is, you know, because that's so that your slaves don't fall over dead, I mean, come on, you know, and I was pretty determined, and so he's like, and, you, and he's like, all right, this conversation's got to end. So he's like, you have to sleep now. And I was like, no, not happening. You can give that command, but I'm not going for it because we're going to discuss this. I'm going to have what I want. And he gave a couple of responses. And I imagine they were along the lines like if, if, you're, if somebody's uh, arguing with you like that and, you know, there's a lot of responses people give. And, and one of the instinctive ones is to continue arguing back. And so he, he, he gave a couple of uh, return comments, and finally he just kind of leaned forward. He got in my face. I'll bet you could even have your access codes, or activation codes. And being as um, matrix information is a no-no topic, um, that immediately shut me down. And the world went completely black. And I remember as I was going under, I was cussing at him because he had managed to put me under anyway. That was that was an interesting thing, and uh, then I don't know if it was the next night or two nights later. I can't remember, but uh, my husband and I went to bed because we were both rather tired. Um, he gets tired early because he has to get up early. I I was unusually tired early, and he has his laptop when he he's home. He he does his laptop in a computer hutch so that you know it can be closed and the living room can be instantly clean because that man will spread a mess worse than the plague. So I remember looking at that hutch going, oh good, it's closed, I don't got a neck, and yay. And uh, we go to bed and I, I had a um, exercise dream and what I mean is I had a dream where I was going doing something I always do. You're getting trained to react in scenarios like I have been through hunt and evade the hunt and evade, evade scenario, which um, is also given in survival training. So I have had infiltration scenarios where I was expected to infiltrate terrorist cells. I, I have um, had just normal scenarios going to the mall, but you know that that person that you're hanging with is a person of interest and you have to memorize everything they do, including what gum they chew. And uh, so this one felt like a normal scenario and the person I was with, my partner, not a person of interest, my partner was a girl I went to high school with. I can't remember what the scenario was now, which is normal. I woke up early 
I woke up between two and three, which is what you do when you come back, because as we have discussed before, no one has given the command, you shall sleep until dawn. I don't know, maybe they do that so you don't miss your alarm for work. I don't know. I can't quite remember the morning very well, but I remember that my husband said to me, did you get on my computer when you were up this morning? And I was like, no, of course not. Your computer has no interest for me. What am I going to do? Get on Facebook and watch you talk about swords? Boring. And he's like, well, the hutch is open and my computer is on. And that's actually a physical manifestation of work. Um, when you come back from what you think you might have been, you wake up and you think you might have been to work, look around, see if your altar did something, if things have been moved. Some people will put flour on the floor to track footsteps. I can tell you that's not always a sure thing because they will actually stand outside your front door and have you come to them. And then you come back and you clean up your mess, you know because that's part of the programming. So you, you gotta look for subtle things, things you do as a habit. And uh, my husband looked in the computer, looked in his browsing history, couldn't find any reason whatsoever, any change, nothing, no evidence that that computer had ever been closed. But I am his witness. That computer was closed, shut off, the hutch was closed, things were clean. Because he, we were expecting company. <laughs> things were clean. And uh, so then through the day, he thought, he kept thinking the time was off, and then finally he, he realized that the time on his computer was set to Pacific time. Somebody had changed the time on his laptop to Pacific time, and he had to change it back to where we are, which is Central. And uh, he was blown away by it. And I said, well, there, you know, a couple of things could have happened, you know, somebody could have done that to fuck with you. Believe it or not, handlers do have senses of humor. Um, they are human, for the most part. And, um, or you come in, and his first habit, he, he doesn't even like, get the funk out of his eyes. He's sitting at his computer. He's a really bad addict to Facebook. And I told him that chances are, you know, my theory is that that was the first thing he did, coming back because he also had an exercise dream. And in his dream, he was in Afghanistan, AWOL, because he's a soldier, and he was AWOL, and the MPs caught up with him, and I was a nationalist with Afghanistan, and he was telling me that we had to go back to the States, that, and he, it, the big point of his dream was that he was telling me we could not run anymore, because if we didn't stop running now, we would end up running for the rest of our lives. There's your physical manifestation right there. Someone changed the time on his computer. Subtle, small, could have been him when he came back, could have been me when I came back. But these are the little things you look for if you need to, confirmation, to con confirm for yourself that you are indeed going to work. Um, so yeah, I mean, there was one time I went to an exercise, and it was an exercise in an old quarry, and I remember knowing it was an old quarry, well, thinking it was something else, because that's what you do, you kind of, kind of have this double vision, you see what they want you to see, but if you're already half out of it, because you're aware of, of, of what's really going on, and the knowledge is there, you're also going to have this double vision, so I was seeing this white wall of this old shack, while being told that I was in an abandoned school, so the white wall of the old shack was also a chalkboard. And I was told to write on it. The exercise was to prove that we could read and write in the state we were being in, of course, but we were told we could not. Because part of the scenario was that um, I was told that I was no longer needed in the program and I was going to have to die. And uh, the gentleman I was with actually got a piece of equipment and killed the handler. I don't know if he really killed him, but killed the handler to protect me, which I, I also know was part of the scenario. Because that's actually the most common scenario is how are the people around me going to react? Are they going to protect me? Are they going to do what they're supposed to do? Two days later, I'm cleaning my bedroom and uh, I saw the chalk sitting on my, um, my chest of drawers. It was a piece of burnt charcoal, which a lot of the area in that area was burnt and so I looked at it and the first thing I checked was the end and sure enough the end was rubbed as if it had been used to write with so then I tested it on the wall and it did write like chalk I unfortunately when I went to the only hypnotherapy session about the matter uh, gave it to the guy and no longer have that bit of 
evidence. Not that it would do me any good because people go, you can just pick this up out of the ground. That's fine. Because that's confirmation for me. Um, believing me is not going to change the situation. So, um, so yeah, look for subtle things, people. When you go to bed, tell yourself, I'm going to bring something home today or I'm going to do something. You can program yourself. And by the way, you can do it without praying to Christ or, or Buddha or whatever God you want because this is your mind, you know. You can do these things, you know. Just be careful, don't go too far. Because if you do, you're going to piss off a handler and you might end up with a jerk idiot handler like I ended up with when my husband went to Afghanistan and that is a long story for another day.